This is Hannibal from the HannibalTV.com. Tyson Fury's altercation with Braun Strowman was the main segment of last night's Raw. They brought Tyson Fury in to help boost ratings. He debuted on the SmackDown show last Friday night, and supposedly this is all to build towards a match versus Braun Strowman at the Crown Jewel event in Saudi Arabia because they want big name super matches on their show. It's been reported some of the wrestlers can make between three to four million for appearing on Saudi Arabia cards and it's in Brock Lesnar's contract that he has to be used on all Saudi Arabia cards for this reason. But this altercation, unlike the Steve Austin Mike Tyson altercation that was done prior to WrestleMania 13 that was great. It was realistic. It built interest. This looked pre-planned right from the start when Tyson Fury's in the ring by himself and there's just a whole group of security guards randomly standing around the ring. One of the reasons why the Tyson pull apart was believable because he had a crew of guys with him. Um, whereas Fury did not. So you knew there was something that was going to happen, and just like every promo, Braun Strowman comes out. Uh, there's dialogue back and forth, and it leads to the first pull-apart. There's a few of these pull-aparts, and eventually, in something that looked very, very phony, there's literally, like, I would say at least 10 of these security guards holding Tyson Fury into one corner and he able he's able to push them all off and some of them go flying and it's like you've just made this so unbelievable but it got far worse whereas he proceeded to throw punches at these security guards there was at least 3 of these punches that missed by a considerable amount where it was very obvious it didn't look like they touched the security guards at all and some of these guards still took outlandish bumps for these uh, phantom punches and then there's a segment where bronze in the back dragging this thing out from an intense realistic thing to just being more like your average wrestling uh, storyline then he comes back there's more pull aparts with wrestlers so they got me to watch it because I was curious about Tyson Fury and then I actually saw someone post on Facebook how horrible that this segment was due to the punches <laughs> missing the wrestlers by a mile or the security guard which are usually extra wrestlers. So then I had to watch it and I believe the WWE's version which is only a condensed version of the entire segment probably has those punches edited out. Whereas the version I saw was on someone else's YouTube channel who had just pirated it. I don't know if it'll be up for long. In other wrestling news, I listened to the Wrestling Observer radio show today. and Dave Meltzer said the Hell in the Cell pay-per-view sucked overall. There was only three really promoted matches and they put two of them on first and second. Uh, those were the best two matches, according to Meltzer. So the rest of the card, although the matches weren't bad, reportedly there was no buildup to them, so it was hard to get interested in them. In the match between Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins, they used a red tint in the match where the ring was lit up red, which is... Just bizarre to me, and you hear that they're going to go more sports like being on spots, but, but, uh, Fox, but what kind of sport would ever allow a fighting area to be dyed completely or to be lit completely red? It's funny that they're doing this hokey stuff because from what I understand, it's actually more adults that are actually watching WWE than kids, and especially... Uh, pay-per-views that run late at night and then the hokey stuff like the bit the scary guy with the mask has to have red lighting when he wrestles I don't know that's a little much 
Uh, the crowd hated the finish, which was basically a DQ finish and a no disqualification. Hell in the Cell match, the crowd was booing heavily afterwards, and there were several chants of AEW, apparently. According to Dave Meltzer, Seth Rollins is not moving ratings when you look at the quarter hours. And, of course, the house shows recently, there's been a lot of cancellations he was booed heavily at the end of the Fiend match. Meltzer said the from a decision-making standpoint, it was one of the worst all-time pay-per-views. And he also said the commentary on the pay-per-view was horrible. According to the quarter hours, Dave Meltzer is reporting that the 24-hour stuff is also not getting over. The ratings are lower for those segments. Uh, Sasha Banks and Bray Wyatt were not medically cleared to appear on Raw. Banks had stitches in her lips stemming from her match. Carlito put out a tweet that got a lot of press in the wrestling news this past week and saying, I feel sorry for you NXT kids. You're fighting for your future and at the same time killing your future. You want to establish yourself in WWE, but you're still at the same time fighting against another avenue for you to shine. Good luck to everybody. I highly doubt that AEW is going to hold any animosity to anyone appearing on NXT. Highly, highly doubt that. Totally disagree with that statement. 205 Live was mysteriously canceled last week, despite being advertised in the arena and for the WWE Network, but they are saying... There is going to be a taping for that happening in Vegas this week. It was believed they canceled it last week because there was Fox executives in the audience and a lot of people leave for the 205 live portion of the tapings. And WWE did not want the executives to see that. That is just hearsay. I had a few comments about the clip I posted from an interview I did with a... Uh, spiritual minister reverend uh bill bean who does spiritual cleansing he's appeared on uh, the travel channel show the haunting many times so yes i posted a question uh he's dealt a lot with possessions uh any thoughts on if that could have had anything to do with chris benoit um that was part of an extended interview on similar topics. So that's why that question was brought up. I mean, there was some abuse allegations uh, prior to the killings in the Benoit matter. I believe there was even a restraining order getting in place from Nancy's side. So it's not like this totally happened out of nowhere, but it seemed like this was uncharacteristic of Benoit overall. And I did meet him numerous times backstage when I was uh, doing extra work for WWE. And I wouldn't have sensed um, that he was capable of that either. So that's just what I had, a, why I asked the question about possible possessions. I don't necessarily even believe in possessions, but the uh, podcast was interviewing a guy who allegedly exercises haunted house and performs exorcisms on also people. So that's what the question was. I was by no means um, trying to say that that was fact. It's just another theory like the many theories out there.